Hey y'all, welcome back to the Hack Shack. On today's episode, we'll be installing GPDOS in my Commodore 64C computer. Um, I'd always wanted one of these, never had one back in the day. I've had some fast loader cartridges, but never a real actual GPDOS switchable uh, ROM in my machine. I always was envious of folks that had that. I never had one. Wasn't really a power user when I was younger. And uh, so I've been looking forward to doing this for a long time. I've actually had this part for probably five years and never installed it. And I actually have a small issue with what I had on hand, which you'll see in the video. But uh, stick around and hope you enjoy this. So first things first, uh, this is a uh, Commodore 64C. Like I said, it's a 250466 um, revision on the motherboard. Here I'm just flipping it over and we're getting the screws out so we can crack the case open here. And get that uh, keyboard taken off. And here now I'm uh, just starting to take the heat shield off. And uh, kind of thinking about not putting that back on. I know there's uh, different schools of thought on that. I'm thinking about maybe just leaving that off and putting heat sinks on the some of the chips in question, but I uh, wonder what you all think out there. The original Jiffy Dolls I ordered was a 28 pin. I think when I originally ordered this, I looked at the 64C, not the pin count, and didn't know any better. Now I'm just continuing on with uh, getting anything out of the way to get the uh, board out of the case here. Not long after getting this thing free is when I realized I had the uh, wrong chip for the board. So then I went ahead and ordered one. A few moments later. After the correct size 24 pin Jiffy DOS chip came in and the uh, replacement sockets I ordered, I went ahead and we got back to uh, getting this pesky pain in the rear end shield off of this thing. Um, I know some folks just clip those off and have little smaller pieces easier to, to desolder, but. Uh, uh, I'm not sure. I'm on the fence about putting this shield back on there. I know it's like a you know interference kind of thing, but I don't know if it's worth the hassle. If it's not something I'm leaving on all the time, I'm uh, interested in what you guys do on these. Do you leave these shields off um, or on? I, I try to just pull these tabs back the normal way. It felt like it took forever to get that thing off. I was so happy to get that shield off of there. Uh, now that we had that shield off, I was just going around and cleaning up uh, some of that flux and extra solder and remaining solder from the places where the uh, shield was attached just to clean that up a little bit. Now you'll see where I'm marking that board. Uh, I haven't done a million of these and I wanted to make sure I was working on those right two rows of pins. So I just put a little light mark there so I'd know which ones I was working on and I began to uh, desolder these out. Some of these were kind of a pickle to get all the solder out. Uh, made sure to use flux sometimes and then some I had to add new solder back and then uh, 
use the sucker again to finally get it all out. And you'll see on the top, I had to do that a little bit to get those vias totally clean. I didn't have the shot uh, in the right place, but there's the old kernel chip coming out right there. Here's the new fancy uh, socket with the circular type uh, holes. And uh, after that, I'm going and uh, cleaning off the top. And you'll see, like I mentioned earlier, I do a little, uh, have to do a little work to try to um, get those holes clean all the way from some remaining solder. Some cases, like I said, I had to add some fresh solder to uh, then be able to suck all of it back out. sure to clean all that uh, flux residue off of there. Now we're seating in that uh, new socket. I'm tacking the corners of it first uh, to kind of keep it in there. And you may see I'll hit the flux pin on some of these. I'm not sure if I catch that or not. You'll see and then uh, basically just start uh, soldering all these pins in. Here just doing a little more cleanup, getting that flux off. And uh, now we're gonna stick in the Jiffy DOS chip into the new socket finally. So now we wanted to test and compare stock versus with the Jiffy DOS enable. Here's with the uh, stock kernel running, loading Fix It Felix Jr. This is sped up quite a bit, you'll see. And it will end up taking about, I think a minute and 27 seconds here, let's see. Yeah, 1 minute 27 seconds for stock to load that from the SDI you see. Now we're going to switch over to Jiffy DOS. And this is not sped up. This will be real time loading. And you'll see it will be just shy of 9 seconds. So that's quite a big improvement there. Hey, if you made it this far, I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, quite a big performance increase, wouldn't you say? I hope to maybe be doing some more. When I ordered this uh, newer right size 24 pin chip, I also ordered a, uh, a Jiffy DOS from my 1571. So I might be making another video with that. And I hope to maybe do a comparison between the SDIEC and uh, physical drive with the Jiffy DOS loading and compare that Jiffy DOS stock, maybe warp speed cartridge if I can find one of those again. And I do have an Epix fast load cartridge, so might try that. But uh, thanks for hanging around and we hope to see you next time. Bye-bye.